What's up everyone, I'm Mike. I am the hi-fi fanatic behind Audio Architects. For those who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. If you're a first timer and you're into speakers, amps, CD players, subwoofers, headphones, music, basically all things audio, you're in the right place. It would be best if you stuck around for a bit because today I'm gonna be getting inside the world of Rotel with their iconic CD11 tribute designed by the legendary Ken Ishiwata. Ken Ishiwata had a clear vision and objective throughout his career. Music was the driving force behind his innovation and improvements of hi-fi products. For over 30 years, Mr. Ishiwata had been fusing his passion for music with his creative engineering design approach, resulting in the conception of many high quality audio products. Morantz and Rotel were the two companies that came up most when I read about Mr. Ishiwata and his intriguing career in the hi-fi industry. As both an engineer and brand ambassador, Mr. Ishiwata was instrumental in finding opportunities where he could make small changes to upgrade the sound of the product he was working on. Whether it was, you know, swapping out a capacitor or resistor as he did with the prototype of the CD11 Tribute, which we will be talking about today, or improving the engineering process altogether by implementing higher quality components. And he carefully listened to every characteristic of the sound until he got it right, component by component. During an acceptance speech at the Lifetime Achievement and Outstanding Contribution Award at the 2019 What Hi-Fi Award Show, he explained how he had been able to experience the evolution of hi-fi, starting from the beginning with stereo LPs and tube amps, all the way to streaming. One part in particular that caught me was when he said that the compact disc has such potential and that CD players today are sounding fantastic. He wasn't wrong. Throughout the last two years of making videos on this channel, I haven't necessarily developed a personal connection to my work. Sure, I enjoy, I enjoy testing, evaluating, and listening to some of today's most notable products. Who wouldn't? However, I didn't have a distinct direction as to where I was headed, or my intentions, or what my intentions were with any of this, until recently when I rediscovered my passion for the culture of the compact disc. After researching Mr. Ishiwata's decades of work, he was a true master of his art. He was also a professional fashion photographer prior to his work in the hi-fi industry, which also created a sense of commonality for me because of my past as a professional photographer as well. It resonated. He dedicated his life to improving the way we listen to the music that the artists produce in the closest way possible of how they intended it to sound at an affordable price. It's a shame this industry in general doesn't embrace Mr. Ishiwata's mantra about sound, quality, build, and price as much as it should. Before we dive into the CD11 tribute, which I am personally honored and excited to talk about, I want to leave you with this last quote I stumbled upon from Mr. Ishiwata. I want to tell to the end consumer. Trust your own ears and heart. You take your favorite music, you play that specific track, and if your emotion is moved, this system has a value for you. I honestly don't think anyone could have said it better. The way he passed on music to others was his most significant contribution to the industry and to this world. I believe my discovery of Mr. Ishiwata's work and philosophies has in a way reconstructed how I will be not only reviewing products moving forward, but the way I see them. After all, growth and evolution have brought us from the phonograph to what we have today. Let's look at the CD11 tribute and explore one of Mr. Ishiwata's final projects. The primary characteristic I love about the CD11 tribute is that it's a straight up red book disc player with an unbalanced stereo analog output and a coax digital out if you'd instead connect it to your external DAC and use it as a transport. 
The only thing about the CD player that separates it from a classic CD player of the 80s and 90s is its modern Texas Instruments DAC chip and its aesthetics. I love this, mainly because Mr. Ishiwata's philosophy back to the very beginning of his days with Marantz was to keep things simple. You may wonder what he did to improve the quality of Rotel's CD11 from 2018. Well, he evaluated the original and recommended the replacement of a resistor and several capacitors in the DAC stage and power supply, as well as some improvements with the electrical ground paths. After some time, it almost seemed like he redesigned the entire player from the ground up. As I mentioned, he unfortunately passed before the unit's release, and his family was asked if Rotel could honor him by giving it the tribute designation. The aesthetics are minimal and clean. I love it. With a dimmable front display, a power button, and six buttons on the opposite side to control the unit's essential functions. It did arrive with an attractive remote control, which I imagine is how most people use their components at home. The black brush metal look in the front is reminiscent of a Rotel CD player I had several years ago, which is a feature I you know, feel gives the unit a sense of luxury and prestige rather than just a dull plastic look. The top has a sort of raindrop texture to the metal case, separating it from what could have been in just a boring black metal case that most CD players come standard with. As we make our way to the rear, it's as simple as simple can get. It has RCA outputs for your analog needs, a digital coaxial out to connect to your favorite external DAC, a serial RS-232 connection for third-party control system integration, a 12-volt trigger input, and a connection called Rotel Link, which can be used with compatible components linked to the Rotel app. Easy enough, right? Well, he kept it simple. So now let's get into how it performed in my system. Even though the CD11 Tribute comes with a standard stereo RCA cable in the box, I decided to use a pair of evergreen RCA cables by AudioQuest to route the player's output to the Cambridge Audio Evo 150. I would have enjoyed hearing the synergy from matching the CD11 Tribute with the A11 Tribute, an integrated amplifier by Rotel that shares the same story as the CD player. Perhaps that's something fun we can explore here soon in the future. I used a pair of world's best cables to output to the Wharfdale Lintons for this evaluation. Now, whoa, whoa, the company's name is World's Best Cables, by the way. I don't want you to confuse the situation and think I am calling them the world's best cables. However, they are pretty nice. Megami Copper never disappoints. I'll link all these components and interconnects in the description below so you can take a look at them and, and see what they're all about. I chose CDs from different genres to see how the CD11 tribute performed with various instruments, frequencies, and dynamics. The first album I chose was a Hans Zimmer album called The Dune Sketchbook an extension to the already fantastic soundtrack released for last year's iconic film. It can showcase a system's true abilities and reveal its limitations because of the mere fact that it's literally all over the place. Its soundstage is off the charts, and the bass, vocals, and array between the frequency ranges can challenge even the most advanced systems. I felt the CD11 tribute took the song Paul's Dream one of the most recognizable if you've watched the film, and delivered exactly what I wanted to hear. A balanced sound with excellent bass, pronounced mids, and relatively tame highs. The next album I tried was Paramore Sessions by Papa Roach. I find this album noteworthy because, yes, it's a new metal band from the early 2000s, you guys can go ahead and eye roll, which <laughs> I always catch flack for liking them, but still, Paramore Sessions is unique and it was recorded in a historic 20,000 square foot house the band rented out in LA called the Paramore Mansion, which the name of the album reflects. The song, well, songs have a bit of an echoey vibe, almost chamber-like, so I wanted to see how the CD11 delivered some of them. It did effortlessly and sounded open and expansive. I got a little curious, so I connected a digital coax cable, the cinnamon actually from AudioQuest, to a Denifrips Ares 2 for direct comparison. I A-beat it. The DAC inside the player was way more open, 
way more dynamic. It felt like the Denifrips was actually taming down the life from the music. Lastly, I wanted to hear some nice guitars. So I went with Rodrigo and Gabriela, self-titled album, and was able to hear even the most minor details. I love hearing when the musician is playing the guitar and their hands run down the strings. You know that, that sound it makes? I know it's not part of the song. However, it's part of creating the music. And this player was able to capture even those minute details. I rarely find a player where I prefer the onboard DAC to my external DAC. However, the Tribute is now one of them. I felt it had a very natural and open sound with good bass, prominent mids. So vocals are a dream on this unit and decent highs. Not too harsh, not too tame. So much neutrality really to the music. It seems like the CD11 Tribute likes music that offers strong vocals and classical instruments. But overall, I think this is an excellent starting point for someone looking for a nice CD player that can deliver a dynamic and natural sound and wants to spend under a grand. I tip my hat to Ken Ishiwata for really getting it right with the CD11 tribute. I want to thank the folks at Rotel for sending out this unit for evaluation. It was an esteemed pleasure to even talk about Mr. Ishiwata for a bit. But stay tuned, because I am setting up an interview with one of Mr. Ishiwata's good friends, and as well as the lead engineer on the team that developed the CD11 tribute right alongside Mr. Ishiwata. That will be released in the next couple weeks. Thank you all for joining me. If you're already subscribed, thank you. You guys are awesome. I have an online shop where you can buy audio-related t-shirts, hoodies, and merchandise. That's kind of my uh, replacement for the other thing I was doing the Patreon. If you'd like to check it out, just wander down to the description below. If you're new to the channel and like it so far, I encourage you to go check out some of my other stuff. Go look at my other videos to see if my channel is the right fit for you. I would love for you to end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me. Take care and I will see you next time.